am Miss Kristen. I'm Miss Kate. Come along and join us for Priceless treasure. God knows me. God hears me. God is my comfort. I am His, and there's nothing better. Forgiven and chosen forever. I am a treasure. is from Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 and it goes like this I can do I can do all things all things through Christ through Christ who strengthens who strengthens me me bye pastor Tom pastor Oh, hey, welcome kids. Pastor Scott here, and you are coming into my office. I've got lots of things in this office. Over here, I've got the guitars that I use when I do chapel. I've got a lot of books, lots of books. See the sailboat? I love to go sailing. Anybody, have you gone sailing before? And then over here, I've got, uh, 
And there's some diplomas, some of the schools that I went to. Anyways, I'm glad you're here. You know, I wanna, I wanna talk to you a little bit today about really important people. Can you think of some important people, things that, that you think would do great things? Maybe you have like President of the United States, or maybe like a great football player, maybe um, a great actor or actress, or what about some musician that sings before a whole big crowd? Well, here, I got a big desk, don't I? And I got a nice office. Maybe, maybe you expect big things from here as well. But here's where God surprises us. Using some of the people that no one would think would do great things, that God chooses them, like me and like you, to do amazing things. And with that, I'm going to tell you a story in the Bible about a woman named Esther. Let's go over and sit on the couch. I want to tell you about the story about Esther. Now, Esther, um, she was a queen. And you, you'd expect great big things from queens and kings. But not in her case. It's a little bit different. Years and years ago, way back in the Bible, there was this king, he had a funny name, Xerxes. Can you say Xerxes? Xerxes. This king had a contest to find out who is the, the prettiest woman in the whole country. And she would be his queen. Well, they found Esther and she became queen, but it wasn't, it wasn't a close relationship. I mean, it wasn't like your mom and dad. They really didn't know each other all that well. This king and queen, they kind of did their separate things. And this queen, she was just an ordinary person that happened to win the contest as the most beautiful. Here's what happened. One day, her uncle came to her and told her about this awful, horrible plan that some bad guy wanted to kill all of Esther's people in the land. And, and, and her uncle said, you gotta go to the king. You gotta tell him to stop it. And Esther said, I can't go to the king. I can't just walk up and go to the king. We don't have meals together. We're not in the same bedroom. We're not together. She really thought she was a nobody. But then, but then her uncle said, this is important. And who knows, maybe God brought you here at this time for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Well, Esther got all the courage and she went to the king, told him about the evil, bad plan to hurt her people. And he stopped it. Here's the point. Maybe you think, I'm just a kid. I can't do anything. But think about all the times in the Bible in which God used people that nobody else thought could do anything. God used a shepherd named David to become the greatest king of all times. God took a fisherman like Peter to be the head of the whole church. God took an old lady like Sarah and for her and Abraham to have a baby and populate the whole world. God took a young woman, a girl named Mary, and she gave birth to Jesus. And God took a baby, Jesus, to be able to change the world. So don't say that I'm just a kid, or I'm just too small, or... No. Because this is where God does his very best work. He uses people like you, and me, and shepherds, and fishermen, and old ladies, and young girls, and babies, to change the world. 
Pastor Scott was telling us so many things about Esther, how she was just a regular girl and then became queen and saved her people. But I want to know a little bit more. How exactly did she save her people? Do you know? Let's watch this video together and find out just a little bit more about our girl Esther. God's story, Esther. So part of God's story is about a woman named Esther and it goes like this. Esther was adopted by her cousin Mordecai because her parents died. She and Mordecai were Jewish, which means they were part of God's special family. Our story begins right before Esther becomes queen and God's family gets in some serious danger. Now, even though Esther was Jewish, she lived in Persia, which was ruled by King Xerxes. One night, King Xerxes wanted to show off his wife, Queen Vashti, at a party. She said no. Shut up. So he said Vashti could never see him again, and he needed a new queen. So the king invited all the single ladies in Persia to his palace for a year. He decided Esther was prettiest, and she became queen. Really? But as crazy as that sounds, it was a good choice because Esther saved his life. See, one day, Mordecai overheard two guards plotting to kill the king. So he told Esther, and Esther told Xerxes. Around the same time, another powerful man at the palace, Haman, got really mad at Mordecai. He didn't know Mordecai had saved the king's life, or that he was the queen's cousin. So he made a rule that all Jews must die. Like we said, he was really mad. And the king let Haman make this law because he had no idea that Mordecai or Esther were Jewish. Well, all the Jewish people were heartbroken, but Mordecai thought maybe Esther could save them. She was queen after all. Problem is, only a king could change laws. And anybody who even spoke to the king when he didn't want to listen could die, including Esther. But she was willing to try. She said, if I die, I die. Talk about brave. So Esther visited the king. To her relief, he said, what do you want? I'll give it to you. Esther had a plan. Politely, she invited King Xerxes and Haman to dinner. She had saved the king's life. Now she was making a special dinner for him. Xerxes liked that. He said yes. That night, the king asked Esther what she wanted again. And again, Esther invited them to dinner. Haman was thrilled to be invited to dine with the king and queen, twice. But even with this special treatment, he knew he couldn't be truly happy until Mordecai was dead. 
So he came up with a plan to kill him the next day. But that same day, the king realized that Mordecai had never been honored for saving him. So Xerxes asked Haman how to honor someone. Haman thought the king was going to honor him. Instead, he honored Mordecai. So Haman was already in a bad mood when he got to dinner. But his day went from bad to worse. See, Esther finally told the king that someone made a law to destroy her people. Xerxes was furious and asked, Who dared to do such a thing? Esther told him, it was Haman. Then, the king found out that Haman wanted to kill Mordecai too. Enraged, he ordered that Haman be killed. After that, King Xerxes told Mordecai to make a new law to save the Jewish people. They honored Mordecai and celebrated with a feast. Esther had been willing to risk her life for her people, and she ended up saving them. Like Esther, another rescuer would come one day, and he would actually die to save all of God's special family. And that's the story of Esther. Wow, Esther was so very brave. I don't know if I could have been as brave as she was, being so nervous because going before the king when you weren't invited, and if he was in a bad mood, he could have you killed, even if you were his queen and married to him. It took her a lot of courage to go to him, but she knew what the right thing was to do, and she was brave enough to do it. So friends, as you go through your week, when you know what the right thing is to do, I want you to remember to be brave like Esther and follow what God would want you to do, whether it's standing up to a bully or playing with someone at recess and making sure they're included. When you know, be brave like Esther. Talk to you later, friends. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Christ Kids TV.